record and we are recording isaac hoffman hey. welcome i'm Devin. Hey. yes How's it's it? very it's very very nice to meet you we, nice we've never you met in, in real life yeah what a pleasure uh thank you for taking the time and um if you want because i i would be happy to kind of introduce you but but i don't know the you know much about um how you would relay you know your 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 life's work if you like to you know on yeah. an elevator pitch level so if you want to tell myself and and the viewers you know what what's good and what you're up to then then we can maybe get into it man yeah so um usually i like to explain where my experience comes from and my experience comes from um, a lifetime first of my dad taking me out as a kid camping on the beaches of California when you could camp on the beach and have fires and such. And uh, then it continued further uh, with uh, doing a degree uh, way, long, way, way uh, long after that, doing a degree in outdoor adventure leadership for uh, Southern Oregon University. And um, that's where I kind of uh, saw um, you uh, giving uh, an interview to my friend Justin and so I reached out to you and I was like oh cool he's doing it kind of uh, uh, kind of the, to a person uh, like like me you know so I was like I, I might fit in there and and, and I really uh, feel that um, I have a, a good opinion on you know and a good uh, experience uh, to share with people uh, through what I learned uh, as um, uh, a part of the Outdoor Adventure Leadership Program at Ashland. And uh, I got a degree there also in video production, which has helped me uh, form my outdoor experience in a way where I can shoot it. And that's what I wanna do, is I want to eventually, it would be cool to do some adventure uh, photography and videography. That's one thing that I'm doing right now is I'm shooting a documentary called For the Love of It, and uh, it's all about extreme sports, uh, why you do extreme sports, the who, what, when, where, and why of it, um, and why do people like, you know, uh, mothers against uh, stream, extreme sports and all these crazy people like that on, uh, that I think are crazy on Facebook and, and social media, why do they say we have a death wish and such? Um, so it, it goes really deep into that, and, um, that's one thing I did learn there uh, through the uh, degree I got um, uh, as a video production student. And also, um, after that, I was lucky enough to become a raft guide on the Rogue River. And uh, I did huh. that guiding for one season, and I got about 500 miles of river time in, which is really cool to, to at least have one experience going down the lower Rogue on the Wild and Scenic, Devin, if you've ever done it. Um, or if you haven't, I, have not, I, I have not I, been on. I suggest no. definitely okay. doing it. You go to all these old lodges that, like, yeah, presidents and like John Wayne and all these crazy people have been to. That you're like, whoa, really? They've been down this river on these same rapids and shot these same rapids, which is really cool to experience. So um, after that, um, that was in 2017. I did that. Uh, I graduated in uh, 2015. Um, but uh, after that, I went to China. I applied. I said, you know what? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to apply myself somewhere uh, uh, near, somewhere far instead of somewhere near. Sure. And I, I've always wanted to travel. So I applied at Insight Adventures. And Insight Adventures is one of the leading companies in the outdoor industry there in China, uh, in Yongshua, China. And that's southern China. And so I went over there and I had to get my visa and I had to get my passport and uh, it gave me a really good experience in um, meeting other cultures and opening my eyes up to to other places uh, in this world too. So that's a little bit about myself recently. Um, and anything basically before my OAL degree was kind of just like uh, uh, I didn't climb much and I played a lot of football and that's why I went to college was to play football. And I cracked my head open and split it right down the middle, uh, not playing football, but uh, skateboarding. Uh, shouldn't have been doing that. Um, and uh, so I couldn't play football anymore because of that injury. So uh, in college, I found the Outdoor Adventure Leadership Program and started doing that. And it's changed my life. Wow. 
Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, how exciting. How, uh, you know, uh, so many, so many points that I, I wanted to, I wanted to ask you about, um, you know, what, a, what a um, bummer that there's these communities that you were mentioning, like I, I, everybody's heard about mad mothers against drunk driving. Right. But I guess yeah. the mothers against extreme sports. That's funny. I don't, right, I don't doubt one, it for a second. That makes sense. Technically the mothers against drunk driving, but yeah, right. there's one mothers against um, uh, dirt biking, I think, or, or motocross. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, which I don't understand. Here, here's here's my here's my kind of polar view on that. My sober, you know, play both sides view on that. On the one hand, uh, yeah, you know, bunch of spoil sports, right? Bunch of fucking, you know, Kyle's mom, bunch of just uh, malcontents. Um, that yeah. being said, uh, I growing up, um, knowing my personality type, I'm I'm definitely kind of, uh, you know, too much is is not enough, right? Uh, kind of kind of person. <laughs> Yeah, uh, knew that if I got into either of these two things before I was, you know, old and and uh, and reasonable, I would have been dead. And those were guns and motorcycles. So I don't, I don't fuck with either of them. Like I have a healthy yeah. respect for both, but I don't, you know, I don't, I don't get definitely. Get yeah, to, I would. Uh, I, I like to dirt. I like to dirt bike. That's why I don't get why they're against dirt biking. Right. But yeah, I right. wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't get, uh, get on a Kawasaki or a, a Jixer actually uh, myself because I think it's just dangerous uh, crossing the road. You know, people say, how can you how can you go climb up that cliff, you know, without a rope? And it's just like, how could you not wear your seatbelt and drive like a maniac around here and have road rage? Right. <laughs> Right. I mean, yeah. The thing I used to say that I thought was funny, that was a pithy response to anything about, uh, you know, a current endeavor being classified as dangerous is like, cause it's true. Life will kill you. You know, like, like yeah. all things perfect. Like yeah. life's going to kill us. Just life, yeah. just, just itself, you know? Uh, so I just found that that was an easy way to end those conversations. Cause those are uncomfortable conversations, aren't they? About why one does what they do it's like yeah it's a, it's a pretty deep cut it's interesting to hear that you're as passionate as you are about let's say answering that question or 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 defending those you know if you like that have that same kind of passion for something that may or may not be looked at as as da dangerous so let's say but see interestingly I, I my brain goes on a tangent with it right fractals out but i see a really beautiful point to be made and that is you know, and, and the way that I do it for myself, try to get to these interesting points is just play the, the, the farthest opposite, you know, of, the, of two opinions, like play the, the most extreme opinion on the one side and then play the other extreme opinion on the other side. And on the one side, of course, what we're talking about is the, the variety of human experience in the, you know, natural setting. And on the one side, there's, you know, extremely, you know, frenetic, manic, like, like expansive activities where we could fly with kites and, you know, ski down mountains and river raft the river. On the other side, there's these real, you know, uh, sitting at a desk or whatever. Right. So like the, the, the point I'm trying to make is if either one of those extremes is taken as, as the guiding principle, although I would definitely defer to, to the more of the one that, seats itself in the aesthetic of dancing yeah. dancing with the way the way i asked the, the way i asked the question is uh what is adventure to you and i, yeah. I want to ask cool. you that question actually at the end of the conversation yeah i'd be I'll happy to i'd be happy to answer that's, have, that's a yeah i'll question. let you have the the floor of course but the way i am asking it in my documentary is what's adventure to you and adventure um i like to <laughs> i have my own um my own definition of it, but I, I like to, to, I can't help it. I like to take uh, Yvonne Quinard's and he says, adventure is when plan A turns into plan B. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not people, you, he says people overuse that word adventure. Right. And they say, we're going out on an adventure and it's like a day hike to where they've been a million times. Yeah. Uh, that's technically not an event. Now, if you get lost on that one and you've never been down a road, boom, then there's your adventure. <laughs> yeah 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 it hints it hints at something that i think is is you know an ever-present reality and that is to step outside of one's comfort zone is a meaningful phrase you know because it's not just solely internal one's comfort zone we we pattern out our our experience externally 
inside of a comfortable rhythm. And I think the people that tend to find joy in adventure, let's say, or, or, or pursue whatever that is for them, you know, as opposed to shying away from it for the most part, are people that recognize that like, when we put ourselves in a position to fail, it's terrifying. We can fail. Failing hurts. Failing can hurt. I mean, if it's an MMA match, it's going to hurt, right? Failing can be destructive, terribly overwhelming and, and crushing. But, but the only chance that we can ever succeed, the only chance that we can ever move forward, the only chance that we can ever win are when we set ourselves up for failure. Right. There has to be that, that, that welcome of all possible outcomes. And then hopefully with, with the right amount of courage, the, you know, evocation of the best possible outcome. It, it, but, it, it, um, it, 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 what happens is if you fail and you fail again and, and you know how you failed, you learn from that, then you go do it again. Then you shouldn't have that fear to fe- to fail again. Cause you're like, okay, I'm not going right. to do that anymore. I'm right. going to succeed now. So once right. that is removed and, and instead that's why I know it's a joke, uh, but it's safety third. And what I mean by that is you have safety in the back of your mind. You've already thought this out. You've already gone through your process. And that's what these mothers sometimes don't understand. And that's why they're so worried. Uh, It's because they don't understand that we've gone through the calculations of this. And in our mind, there's nothing else like Bruce Lee says, but to do. Yeah, you've, you've, you've gone through all the iterations of failure to lead you to the point of, of, of having a much larger potential for success. And then you can go out and execute on that success. And yeah, I agree. I like, at least with an earlier premise or an earlier point you were making, let's say is, uh, you know, there's people saying why we shouldn't people saying why, you know, a person can't people saying what's, what's to be expected. People saying what's safe, what's easy. Well, yeah, sure. And that's great. You know, in a, in a, synthetic environment that's great in a simulation that's great in you know trying to eliminate the possibility of risk or 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 negative outcome but that's just not life life is going to have negative outcome anyway we're all going to have negative outcome anyway so so why not try to dance with that other side and of course anybody who does outdoor recreation i think does de facto but i mean there's people that get there to adventure without being outdoor recreational people. And, and I, I am more on the side of saying, hey, I found a, a way that that has done these things for me, has has given me adventure in my life, and I want to talk about it. Yeah. But I think it's worth noting is that there's people that achieve that without ever going to the forest. Like and it's it's a yeah. harder like, it's a harder flow. point to make, right? Like the like a, like flow like the like they say like a flow state. That's why right. it's not only it's not only outdoor uh, uh, outdoor adventure uh and sorry outdoor extreme sports that that i would like to do with my documentary it's also fire spinners and it's also uh i want to include stuntmen and and some other uh types of action adventure sports because like you're saying it it matters all across the board in those two uh, you don't have to exactly be out in the wilderness to experience you know an adventure, that fight or flight feeling that you get. We all want right. the feeling of flight, you know? <laughs> right. right, right, right. That's well said. It's like you're, you're, you're getting into that state and it doesn't matter if you're in a, in a boardroom or, you know, a class four rapid or whatever, you're, you're going to crush it, right? If you're in that state. And then I think yeah. learning about that is, is super important. For whatever reason, a lot of the conversations that I've, I've been having doing the the this youtube thing has been around that concept and it's not necessarily something that i at least was conscious of bringing to the table as to be concerned with or or talked about but i suppose i am i mean i suppose i am i suppose it's Mm -hmm. you know it just it just tends to be what i start fucking talking about despite myself and so it's interesting to be able to to connect with guys like yourself isaac because you're you're out there really you're doing something that's important for the community, if you like, for the, for the, for all of the people out there that are saying, I can't stand being told what to do. I can't stand doing the same thing all the time. I can't, I'm going crazy. People, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I feel like I've got anxiety or depression or, you know, I should be on these drugs or, you know, every, I mean, give me a break. It's 2019. That seems to be the story too often. I mean, too yeah. fucking often. And here you are really, really as a counterpoint to that. 
Yeah, it gives you it gives them an outlet. You see these people come on the river as a as a guide, and um, they've never experienced anything like this. And to give them that experience of the outdoors, you see some of these kids. That's what they want to do every season now. They want to come back and go rafting. Right. And man, that's that's special right there to to be able to to help the kids with that. And, and that was one of the things that drove me to do a documentary about it. What was that, that feeling right there. And one of the things that, that I, I would kind of like to, to bring up um, because I, I have it on my mind is when you're talking to Justin last time about, um, about him uh, actually in, um, I think it was India or Nepal and uh, someone was trying to charge him to ski there. And, and I think it was illegal for them to do that. And, and, it's, and it's just interesting. I'm talking about, I want to talk about the ethics of the outdoor yeah. industry and how that's occurring because the outdoor industry is popping up everywhere now. Right. And it's so prevalent everywhere that there's these black market industries popping up. Just like in China, I realized as a guide, you have to watch out because there's these companies over there that will hire you as a guide. And basically, they basically screw you over. They won't pay you what they say they'll pay you because they pay you on something called WeChat. And WeChat technically is just trading dollars over the air. And, and sometimes it won't always work out. And, oh. and also, um, they, they kind of use you, um, the Westerner, as their uh, stand-up. You know what I mean? You'll go in there and you'll do yeah. the uh, briefing. Front man. You'll do the briefing for them. And then they don't want you there anymore because you don't need to be there. That actually, I learned that you, uh, the companies, some of these companies are getting more money because we are there as their front man. And they're not necessarily giving it back to the guides. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, even the Chinese can do capitalism pretty good, huh? Yeah, man. I'll tell you what, dude. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah. yeah. I, dude, I, I, have, I have a kind of a permanent bad taste in my mouth for for corporate america and frankly corporate uh behavior worldwide i mean i i, I certainly I'm, I'm i will get into it if you're at all interested in hearing that but i'm i'm more intrigued with talking about this this real kind of glowing thing that we're talking about in 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 your passion and and what you're what you're talking about and i wanted to make one point about at least my relationship with what i think is 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 the same thing and that is you know i grew up skiing right i i that was one of the great gifts that my parents gave to me in my life is they got me in ski lessons when i was just a super little tiny kid because they were like at club med and they were doing their thing and god bless them and they're like just put devin in, in the place and they'll they'll you know take care of him. and 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 it was the best thing ever because i nice. started a long term i mean up to the present day right a a, a, a lifelong relationship and and uh, uh, Justin and I were talking about the, the, the at least I, I thought we made the point fairly well, the, the reality that these outdoor pursuits tend to really be in a certain way of looking at it, a relationship with a place, um, you know, and, and, and that's a really beautiful thing. That's like an existentially sacred thing, right? If you think about it. So anyway, I, I really fell in love with skiing and have kind of honored that my whole life and had just so many amazing times times with with friends with 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 you know lovers with with, with my wife now with with i mean my, my family it's just been a joy in my life skiing right well here's an interesting thing that i think is worth saying only now as a, as a young man but but for the last about 10 years um also i've had this understanding of the responsibility to honor skiing and the way that I've chosen to do that in my life up until this point is, is mainly ski patrolling. So I was a volunteer for several years. I've worked as a paid patroller as that's my job, nine to five, whatever, um, for four years. But see, for me, and I think, and the reason I bring it up is because I think there's an analog to your pursuit as a, as a filmmaker. And I think there's an analog to Justin, you know, and, and you're a guide as well, I understand, on uh, Whitewater. And, and Justin's, you know, a guide. I know you guys, you know, are probably in the same community uh, uh, in, in, in ski guiding or, 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 or river guiding, at least I would guess. Um, I, think that, I think that part of what births a, a guide or, 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 or a, an emergency medical person or a, you know, I think there's a lot of different ways to do it, right? Being a teacher or being, is some, there's something about those experiences that at the face of them are pointless and dangerous and to be you know 
to, you know, people that are not capable or, or otherwise unfit to be discouraged from even trying are so, are so healing, are so health giving, are so consumed and saturated with life force that the people that do it just a little bit, people that are just introduced to it are like leveled up, are like, they like, their lives improve. That's something that has just been punching me in the face in the last few years. Like the, the realization that I'm getting older, you know, I'm, I, I don't know if my best ski turns are behind me or in front of me, but, but you know, I love it so much and I know how, power, how powerful it is and how, how wonderful it is. Like the, the ski patrolling part starts to be more of a call. Not that free skiing isn't, just that it's a way of making good on it, you know? And I wonder if you feel kind of similarly with your, with your documentary that you're, that you're working on. Like it's an that, honoring of it. Yes. Yeah. Like, um, I feel like my friend told me this one time I was, I was telling her and, um, I'll hook you up with her name because she's definitely someone, uh, you might want to have a conversation with. Um, um, she, she, I told her I, what I wanted to do one time. I said I was going to, uh, circumnavigate, uh, Klamath Lake, uh, when it was frozen. And oh, wow. Says, you know, you, wow. I don't think, I don't think anyone's ever done that. I said, no, nah, I know. I, I don't think anyone's ever done that either. Uh, people have crossed it, but never gone around just the outside all the way around it, uh, during the winter. And, uh, and she says, you know what? You really do need something. Uh, I've always felt, Isaac, that you were going to do something that, that would set you aside, kind of like that. And I haven't done that yet, <laughs> uh, but I will. It's, it's on that list. You know what I mean? So I my goal. Um, but anyways, that's what my documentary is, basically kind of uh, an outlet of how uh, of showing uh, um, basically something that will set me apart. You know what I mean? Um, not not just me, not just me, but uh, sets the outdoor industry apart. Why, why do we do it? It asks the question why we do it. You know what I mean? And yes, it's, there's, there's this joy that, that I get out of it when I'm, I'm there in the moment, you know, uh, either filming it or doing it myself. And it, it's, it's really great. And it, it's, it's one of the reasons why I brought up kind of the, the ethics of it earlier because I'm so passionate of it and I can't, and that's the first thing I think about is people kind of screwing over the industry. But I, I would love to talk way more about, about what you're saying, you know, kind of the, the awe of it, you know what I mean? And the shock value from it, because you get people out there experiencing the, the outdoors and it's, it's something you've never seen before in your life. It changes them definitely. Uh, or, or it can, if you let it, because sometimes it, it, it's, uh, it's hard for, for people to adapt and, and to be out there, you know, in that, in that environment, you know? Right. 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 Yeah. I mean, I don't know what to say. It's, 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 um, it's one of those things that is so sobering to me that when I start to think about how good a job I'm doing at it, I start to kind of feel shitty. It's like, fuck, <laughs> like I could do a lot better, you know? What, mount, what mountain did you ski on? just recently or what do you mean no, no. What, what did you grow up on oh oh i mean i i was not born and raised close to the mountains i was uh, born what in mountain, what mountain did you, what we, would, did you we would go to yeah we would go to tahoe we would oh, we, nice. we grew up going to tahoe yeah yeah, yeah. I, uh, I i uh i grew up in the bay area in oakley california so tahoe okay. was about an hour drive very yeah. expensive i never went uh at all except for maybe a few times when I was a kid. So I didn't really start my snowboarding crew until I got into college and okay. it's not really much of a career. You know what I mean? It's following my, my friends around that are sponsored and, and having them teach me backflips whenever I can. But awesome. it's really, it's, it was really fun. Um, because the, the ski, um, uh, camaraderie and the community is really a good one to, to get involved with early on. And, uh, I feel like even if I would have gotten it involved early on, I probably would have went way more into snowboarding. <laughs> Not that I regret it at all because I'm a climber. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. No, I, I, I hear you. That's, that's a good point. I think that these sports, you know, these pursuits, adventure, just, just trying to distill it into something that, that, you know, carries across all, all um, 
verticals, if you like, but let's just say skiing and mountain biking, at least from what I've seen, have such vibrant communities. They, there's so many people that are out there that really, that really care, that really you know, are spending hours of their lives, you know, whether it's building the trails or, 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 you know, getting the mountain open and shoveling snow or whatever, like, like people that are not going to get any thanks people that are not in the fucking weekly local paper, yeah. people that yeah. don't have 100,000 views on YouTube, just just people. And those are the people that are digging motherfuckers out of their driveway every day to get to the mountain to start the thing. Those are the people, you know, packing the lunches and all that stuff. And I don't know, man, like the more that I, that I think about this, the more it kind of is a humbling thought because I realize that part of the thing that I think a lot of skateboarders, snowboarders, skiers to a lesser degree, because we're, we're a more buttoned up crowd, but uh, surfers for sure. Is, is this, is this feeling like, like to do these things is to be an outcast just de facto, just that's what it is. If you're, if you're wasting your MFing time going to the skate park, you know, when you could be, you know, and, and there, I think we all have that narrative at least somewhere in our psyche. And, and that's, that's a, just a down, just a fucking shitty thing. Not that that's any great tragedy. You know, people I know have been through worse, but I think that, that the reason I bring that up that I find some, some real light at the end of the tunnel on is in truth, these pursuits really do build community in truth when you decide, hey, I'm going to be a snowboarder or whatever, you know, there's a lot of people that are going to make it happen, you know, that are going to help you, that are going to be there to support you, that are going to tell you how good you are, that are going to challenge you to get better, that are going to, you know, like, and, and, and that, you know, it, 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 uh, it's something that I'm, that I'm continually trying to ask to dance, if you like. It's something that I'm still to this day intimidated by. It's something that I still, when I'm shown the door to more involved with the community of skiers, let's say, just, just to use that example. Cause I, cause I, cause I am, you know, and have been, it's like, wow, like I gotta go put my nice suit on, you know? I mean, it's all metaphoric, but like, you know, I, I'm involved with um, national ski patrol or at least have been slightly over the years. Right. And so I'll go right. and help. Uh, when they do their OEC training, OEC is their analog to EMT. So there's emergency medical technician, which is like a 10 week course for just, you know, getting to be like an ambulance driver. OEC is kind of yeah. a similar. I've had a few friends do that. Yeah. You know, OEC, another one that you probably, you've, you've probably been more around woofers, WFR. Yeah. I, yeah. That's, I, I don't have my woofer. I have my WAFA, the wilderness advanced first day. It's the one right before okay. that. And okay. that qualified me enough to work over there for that job in China. And it's yeah. good still. It's good still till next year. It's good for another two years, technically. Wow. Uh, to, sorry, till twenty one. Yeah, till two thousand. So I can technically keep that and just if that's all that you know they need. Yeah, you know, I use right. that. But otherwise, yeah, I'd get that woofer. Right, uh, woofer. definitely. Right, right. Like, yeah, yeah. And and, and OEC is just the same length, and um, it's tailored for ski patrollers, but it's the same curriculum basically. And and. and you know, I, I'd like to say I'm down there at the, at the class every fucking time, but, but, you know, I get that just juggling life and relationships and, you know, daily sanity is, is, is a, a large inventory already for all of us yeah. and to, be able <laughs> to go and, and expand into, into really good, really solid communities. Like I, like the, the respect for the community is there even paramount to me trying to figure my shit out to go into it. So I guess all I'm saying is hats off to you and you know I salute you that you're that you're really deciding to get deeper into the adventure community let's say you're 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 seemingly by your actions just making a, an agreement with yourself where you're saying hey I value these communities of people that are out you know you know in whatever way and in whatever um far removed way helping me get on the on the river helping me go and do the things that I like it's to about do. yeah it's it's about value definitely i agree with that and and how how these communities and and people are are doing it and and the difference in how they how we how they we did it as kids without all the cell phones and we were on pagers and all that and out without all the internet and how kids do it now because you're right uh 
there was this and there is this uh like i heard kind of you mentioned there is this kind of i call it stigmata uh that you'll go nowhere skateboarding you go nowhere rollerblading you go nowhere as a skit as a not, not a, isaac i gotta correct you i'm sorry it's just funny That's, not not so, stigma not stigma and now, yeah and now kids now kids, stigmata is the is the is the wounds in it like, like what's it called it's called stigma Stig <laughs> Stig yeah. stigmata is the, the you have wounds that are like jesus <laughs> so so yeah anyways it's a stigma you know what i mean and yes, sir. and what i'm learning and what i'm learning yeah sorry what i'm learning is um that because of technology and because now there's a, a huge uh, venue for these kids to get jobs and to be sponsored and you got to watch yourself definitely in this uh industry in the industry of being sponsored and that's one of the people I like to in interview is, you know, are you sponsored? Are you not sponsored? Well, why? You know what I mean? And the difference between that. Uh, why didn't you go pro? And some people are like, you know, I'm a, I'm a localist. You know, I'm, I just, I skate locally and, and, and yeah, I skate with the pros all the time, but I don't, I'm not going pro. And some people are the opposite of that. They have more of a drive for it. And um, that's definitely, I think, a good value in, you know, what, uh, what I'm trying to to demonstrate and to get across in my documentary, definitely. Yeah, well, some of my favorite surfers are are not not well. They're sponsored, but they don't compete. Like Jamie O'Brien, I really enjoy. Uh, Koa Rothman is is up and coming, and the thing that they're doing that just affirms, I think, my my belief. Let's say that doing these conversations are so fruitful and important is because those guys are doing vlogs as well. And that's, that's probably the majority of the content that I consume is just shit that I know is pretty much straight from the farm, if you like. Like, I'm telling you, dude, I, call me high strung or whatever, but I'll watch a, like a daytime television show, uh, you know, once every, uh, for as long as I can tolerate it. And about yeah. two minutes in, you know, 10 seconds into a commercial, uh, series let's say i'm like i'm like out of my mind like how how is it that that we as people are so easily fucking dosed up on synthetic information it 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 drives me insane like i fully recognize the 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 reset that the natural world gives me to a place where i can function and have and have good conversations and so forth and I, i've been out of my mind recently so i apologize if i'm talking over you and stuff but no don't the, worry about it <laughs> you know what i'm saying but god my heart goes out to everybody like people that that are in a nursing home or something or a person who you know is 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 uh in otherwise incapacitated and has to just listen to tv hours and hours it's yeah. like oh my god because dude it's a sad fact but now I was always more into movies, definitely. You know, because, you know, because of that, and and it's probably one of the reasons that helped me probably be more outside. Uh, just recently, my girlfriend uh, was telling me about this TV show we were just watching uh, on TV. I flipped through it, and I'm like, "What is this?" She's like, "Oh, this is the re a remake of an old show that used to be on. You don't remember it? We're we're the same age." So she's she she assumed that I watched it as a kid. I said, "No." I, no idea and she's like wow this is a really popular one and i go no it wasn't she goes yeah you must have been out climbing a tree or something like that <laughs> probably that's, funny. Yeah. I that's love that. probably why i like to climb is because as a kid i just i would climb i love to climb trees and i climbed to the top as high as i could go before the branches almost broke sometimes and uh, probably one of the reasons why climbing is my favorite sport and then probably uh, whitewater rafting after that. Um, but it's weird. I grew a, a, a real early love for extreme rollerblading, uh, aggressive rollerblading, inline rollerblading, if you know what that is. Sure. And so I love doing that too. Do you do like half pipe or? or oh, yeah. Half, half pipe, quarter pipe, five forties, misty flips, back flip, front flips. Wow. Uh, yeah, I, I want to learn a flip. my next, my next thing is I want to get down my flips more and I want to, and I have a goal written down. Also, I need to film another skate video because I haven't filmed a skate video in a while. And it's one thing I used to do all the time. Um, 
and I haven't done it in a while, so I need to do that definitely. And uh, it's it's a passion that I have that's that's I think helped me in uh, outdoor sports because uh, I guess rollerblading is an outdoor sport, but uh, mm. it's helped me. I mean, in climbing because you you man you hit the deck so many times when you're rollerblading and falling. You know what I mean? Sure. And uh, now I fall when I climb and hit the side of the wall, and I'm ready for it almost. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Okay. You ever go to Castle? Uh, Castle Crags. Yes, I have been. Castle Crags uh, up north, but Castle, Castle Rock in the Santa Cruz Mountains. No, I have not. Oh, dude. Santa Cruz Mountains. No, I have we're, not. We're going to go this week. You got to, uh, uh, if you ever have the opportunity, make it down to Castle Rock to the South Bay to um, like San Jose area. You, nice. You know, okay. Yeah. I've searched, I looked up that area as a climbing area. Yeah. Because really I, I, I have a, a Bay Area top rope book. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't think it has that one in it, but it might. Um, oh, I'd be surprised if it did. I would be surprised yeah, if Bay Area that's... top rope didn't have Castle Rock and Indian Rock. It's just on the skyline. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I did see that one in there. Then, yeah. So I will check that out definitely. Um, this weekend, I'm headed up to Oregon to take care of some businesses. I actually live up there. I'm in California right now doing a summer job. Um, working just to make money so that I can uh, help climb or help myself climb Shasta. <laughs> yeah, you were telling me that you were going to climb Shasta, and we were we were scheduling this conversation around you climbing this weekend. So tell me what happened. So I uh, unfortunately didn't go. I went out of town just uh, over uh, camping on the Delta. I got some cool pictures up on my Instagram of that. Awesome. But other than that, yeah, I, I didn't really do uh, the climb. Unfortunately, right now, and that's why I'm working on this thing in Oregon, is I'm, I'm going up to Oregon to get a car. I'm buying it from my brother. That way, I'll have my own wheels, and I can do this thing myself, proper style. I'm kind of relying on rides right now to get me up there. And the first time I did it, actually, I took the train up there, which is fun. I recommend doing that. Um, but if I have my own car, then I have more time to stay up there and actually do it um, uh, the way I'd want, you know what I mean? Instead of having more of a time crunch because I have a ride coming or whatnot, you know? Sure. Well, so I did it. Know, yeah. I, sorry. I did it. I did, sorry, it I did it once. I did it once. Yeah, right. My grandma said, you're never sorry, Isaac. You can apologize or you can be forgiven. But sorry for convicts or losers and you're neither one. <laughs> I like that. Right. So anyways, June 25th, I, I went for a summit of Shasta and I got up right before Helena Lake at about 95, 9,600 feet. And I don't know that for sure. I just asked some guy going by and he gave me an approximation of where he was. So I, I took that because I stopped right there anyways, <laughs> um, uh, because I, would, I was told that the uh, rangers up there were turning people back if you weren't up by the summit by 11. And I wasn't even to hell in the lake by 1030 or before 1030. So I knew I wasn't going to make the summit before noon. So I would get turned back because of a weather system coming in. So I just turned back and uh, I just left because of that weather system coming in. And I could see it the whole time as I was coming down, rolling around the mountain, coming in. Sure enough, when I got down to town, that's when it started raining. <laughs> How beautiful is Shasta? Oh my gosh, it's got a, it's definitely, I agree what they say, it's got a pool. It's got some sort of pool. I've, I, my, my parents moved up to Klamath Falls and um, I was going, I've been traveling past that mountain for years now since they've lived there and I was going to school in Ashland. And ever since, that's what's made me want to climb that because A, I, I started rock climbing and learning the, the, the trade a little bit or, you know, the industry. Right and how how to and uh and be on passing it every day and the mountains so beautiful man yeah I, I i loved it it was for me that's why i didn't really cry that much about turning around early that day because any any uh amount of success on that mountain was a success for me and uh, i was really happy with it and I, i'm gonna be stoked to go back and get it you know all the way <laughs> so when when is when are you thinking about to try to get a uh, proper Not, summit? Not this weekend because I'm going up to Oregon, but the weekend after that. Okay. Okay. Definitely. How fun. I plan on doing it solo too. You are going to go solo? Yeah. That's what I was doing before too. 
And I was getting a lot of looks and a lot of talk. Like, people were like, as I was going up, people would ask me, they'd give me a look and they'd just walk off. Or they'd, like, come over and they'd be like, oh, what's your turnaround time? Oh, and they were, like, quizzing me and stuff. And, of course, I had all that information, you know what I mean, and where I was going to turn around and stuff. But, uh, I, yeah, I kind of got some looks I wasn't ready for because I was going solo. And most people go with a partner. Most people go guided, too. Oh, yeah, guided, yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> There's SWS and um, Shasta Mountain Guides. Um, yeah. You went, up, uh, you went up Avalanche Gulch? And if you yeah. turn around to Helen Lake, you, you must have. Um, yeah, I agree. There's something super accessible constituted by the divine that is Shasta that yeah. is just it's it's something you, can, you know it's it's something that is not transmittable other than I mean I guess you're if you're a good poet or something you could at least open the door but to just be there, John Muir right you know yeah right John Muir did a better job than most right getting the word out but yeah for sure I uh, I, I've, I've um, had some neat experiences on that mountain yeah, I heard. I heard that's where John Muir died. Actually, he was up there living in a woolly suit for the winter, and he got pneumonia, and he came really? back. Yeah, well, no, not that he died up there, but he got yeah, pneumonia up there, and then he came back with pneumonia, and I think he died of that. But anyways, that was interesting. I I, I hope I'm right on that one. <laughs> people people talk about or people people ask the question fairly regularly if you could have you know a beer with so many people you know who would they be or whatever if you could you know be with somebody for someone john muir would be high on my list yeah he just seemed like he was so far out that he just got it better than than anybody he just was he just had decided that he was going to be an advocate for the the sanctity of the outdoors right and he just did it he did it so and, hard like he just and, did it in that and in that time and in that time you couldn't do stuff like that wasn't you you know what i mean there was certain like society had plans for you 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 couldn't just go out into the woods like <laughs> like you and, yeah. and and look at what a big difference he made I yeah mean, his name is on everything right i mean yeah. you know mere uh, woods I go out to Muir Woods, Muir Beach. Yeah. All that stuff yeah. up here. <laughs> Muir Street. Go to, you know, yeah. And, and and you ever seen a picture of him? But yeah, I've seen a big, huge beard. And him in his, wild, wooly, in his wooly suit. Oh, yeah. Untamed wild eye looking. Yeah. Him. He just like, you know, just had those, that, that mile long stare, you know. You know who yep. he reminds me of with the eyes? Is Rasputin. You ever seen a picture yeah. of Rasputin? Yeah. They just had that, that like, you know, the fucking eyes. And you're saying, Jesus. Like, look at this. Yeah, but, but, they, very, but they clearly. Very intense, very intense scowl. Or yeah. not scowl, sorry. Gaze. But, yeah, whatever. Yeah, gaze. There intense you go. gaze. Yeah. yeah, like they could look, look into something. Yeah. Yeah, well, bro, more power to you. You know, um, I don't know what to say. I'm jealous that you're going and climbing. I've been meaning to go and climb. Um, we're, we're in the Bay Area. I, I feel how it is with being satiated by even less than ideal um when you get out and go do it what i always say about surfing is all it ever takes is one wave i just need to get one wave and then i'm chilling right. the rest of the session i'm not yeah i'm not stressed you know going out do there. you uh, do you do you climb in a gym also uh yeah i just went and climbed uh not not regularly i mean i have over yeah, the years, but uh but um i just went and climbed at planet granite I think it is uh, in Belmont with my buddy Nick Reimnitz. That's I was told about that. Yeah, yeah, that's in, in the peninsula, and that was really fun. Um, I got one of those uh, door hinge, uh, uh, not hinge, but door frame uh, pull up bars uh -huh. off of, like Craigslist for like nothing. Oh, nice! Dollar. Those are cool, dude. I just about broke myself. Firstly. Uh, I'm in there doing, so I, I could do pull-ups and then I figured out that I could do leg lifts. I could do like the fucking CrossFit, like get my legs all the way to the ceiling. And remember, it's like, you know, a foot and a half from the, the ceiling is the top of the door jam, right? The door yeah. Jam. So I'm doing that and I'm throwing my legs up and kicking the ceiling. Isabella, my wife is in the bathroom at this time and I'm, it's in the hallway, <laughs> you know, the door is just before the hallway. And I'm like, I'm like trying to get her attention. I'm like, babe, look at me, look at me. You know, and I'm, doing, I'm doing leg lifts and, and I go to do another one and I just pull, 
pull really hard and, you know, contract my, my core as hard as I can. Yeah. Just harder than the last one, right? Just hard enough to, as I was on the way up, unhook the, the, oh, no. the mechanism that yes. holds the fucking pull-up bar. To you've it's been too hard. far back, yeah. Bro, so I'm, I'm upside down, five and a half feet off the ground, going up with my legs, <laughs> with my legs above my head. You know, like not even in good position for like a backflip. Like no, I couldn't see my landing. I wasn't, right. I wasn't fully upside down. I was just fucked enough that I couldn't get back to like, oh, no. I couldn't like cat back to my, um, you know, center, if you like, even if I knew what was happening. But the trippy part about it was is I didn't know what was happening. I swear to God, I can recount the memory just as it happened because I didn't have so much adrenaline that I blacked out. Like, I, I don't know if you've had that experience. I certainly have. But I had enough adrenaline where I was like, thinking what the f so i did the i did the rep pulled with all i had right but i was getting farther and farther away from the ceiling <laughs> why am i not hitting this oh. my feet hit the ceiling and i just was trying to understand what was happening my brain was trying to spin out a, a a reason why the world was reacting the way it did and then the next thing i knew from the middle of my like head like top of my neck all the way to like halfway down my upper back just I just felt the impact all at once. It was just like, oh, and I just, I, the only thing that I think saved my spine in that, in that potential for a, for a serious trauma, like no bullshit, is that I just had armored myself enough with muscle up until that point. I'm no great big muscular person, but I'm, I have yeah. enough muscle fiber, you know, and a lot of, a lot of slow twitch stuff from doing just being athletic my whole life, right? That when I needed to flex it, I just, and then I was like in spasm for like, like hours you know just like yeah i think i fucked this. ice man ice <laughs> so so yeah i got one of those things and you know started fucking around with that but uh that's pretty much the closest i've been to to putting in time uh on a wall although interestingly watch out for training yeah training i i <sighs> i actually don't recommend training for climbing uh, uh the reason why i don't is and and uh is because i do construction so I'm literally okay. swinging a hammer or using a sawzall or um, flexing all the time and, and, pu and pumping myself out almost at work. So when I'm ready to go at, you know, by the time I go to the gym uh, at the end of the day, if I did or go climbing that weekend, you know, I wouldn't, I uh, don't really like to train much. And uh, I guess that relieves me from potential accidents like that, man, that's too bad. <laughs> no, so, I mean, you know, it, it, it gave me fair understanding of the uh, implement and the possibilities of using it. Uh, I was going to say, interestingly, we just went to Reno and uh, randomly and uh, the, 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 the hotel that we stayed in, believe it or not, had a, a, a climbing gym. And not just a climbing gym, yep. a badass climbing gym. The it's biggest seven, one in the West Coast, I believe, or in the United States. Yeah, you know where I'm talking about. Yep, I've Whitney, been there. Whitney Peak. Yeah, that was kind of yeah. cool. And they I, got a Whitewater Park, too. With the, they divert the Truckee River in there. Did you go see that? Kidding. No. And no, no, I went no, over no. there with my boogie board and my fins, my Blunkett fins. Like, I would go out boogie boarding in the ocean. Yeah. And I hit the water park, and literally, you come down over these waves and paddle into them. And then you're just surfing back and forth on these no big way. waves to divert the Truckee River through. Yeah, How it's really fun. cool. <laughs> I love that. That's a super cool thing that different places do. Bend does that too. You ever been yeah. to Bend, Oregon? I, I've been there. Yeah, I hurt my back there at that one on Bend because I tried crazy. This stunt that they do there is there's a part where the river comes in and gets diverted. And that yeah. part's higher. So you can jump off that part and into the wave. And so I oh, saw these geez. kids. These like twenty year old kids doing this, and I'm still I'm only thirty two, so I'm like I ain't, I I'm not that. old yet. I, I could do that, that. so yeah. I ran over there, boom, sent it off of it, yeah. hurt my back right when I landed, boom. When I landed, I landed it, and it, that's the messed up part. Was I landed it perfect, and I made it the whole transition too, and it looked cool. Off, but if but if you were there, you with you know like me, I dude, I hurt my lower back and could barely even swim in. <laughs> Yeah, area. Yeah. Those, those water are, really fun. are a little dangerous sometimes. <laughs> Dude, we went to uh, Great America. You ever been to Great America? Yes. Yeah, I haven't I, been in a while. I hadn't been in years and years and years. And I'm thinking to myself, 
I know all these fucking roller coasters. I can ride roller coasters. I'll take my wife on all these roller coasters. No problem. Oh my God. Like four roller coasters in my neck and my back had just been shaking <laughs> so much. Right? Yeah. You know, I'm just like, this isn't like, I, you know, I don't want to ride roller coasters anymore. Like, fuck. Like my, the, my, my level of, uh, of um, tolerance for, you know, violence at the, at the, at the, at the amusement park is, is the fucking, you know, uh, Mario Kart game, you know, if it has any yeah. force feedback about the level I'm trying, right. trying to be at. But um, yeah, how funny, dude. Uh, uh, I, I, um, I'm jealous. I'm excited for you. I think that your, your I think, take it with a grain of salt, your movie making endeavor will be extraordinarily you know, all the things, right? It'll be, it'll be challenging. It'll be a growth thing. You feel me? It'll, 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 it'll give you a lot, I think. Thank you very much for that. And it's, it's, you know what I planned on? I planned on it taking a while, but I'm still being uh, impatient with it. I, I want to do it faster um, than, than, um, than not than needs to be done, but just faster than I'm doing it still. I've, I've gotten about a handful of interviews, probably about six interviews, uh, technically six days of shooting. Um, I've got some good interviews from some really uh, great uh, guides over in China that have guided in the outdoor industry. Um, and when you guide there, you, you take kids backpacking, uh, climbing, kayaking, and stuff like that. Um, and then I've also got some uh, interviews from some guys on the front line of skydiving over here on the west coast uh one that i knew personally too from a, uh being my brother's best friend back in the day so it was cool uh i got to go in with him to the uh wind tunnel turbine there in oh, union oh, city fun. i believe and he's one of the uh the uh coaches and i got to film him of course um and he was i i, I dude it was so cool to have that access up there with the camera and be able to film him because for my documentary, that's really going to key in because one of the things I want to key in on is how kids train now compared to back in the day. Back in the day when they didn't have those wind tunnels, you literally just went out there and your dad strapped you or whoever strapped you to you. And then you did that a few times and then you got, you know, there was a certain way. It's a different way, you know, they did it totally. So that's <laughs> one of the things I was looking to expose. And, um, the next interview I want to get, actually, I've been thinking of is some more like uh, skateboarding, um, rollerblading, or even skiing. Um, that's kind of not the good season for it. So it's summer season. So that's why I was thinking skateboarding and rollerblading. But I definitely um, would love to uh, possibly even get an interview from you uh, for uh, the skiing portion of it. Because I think skiing um, is a very important extreme sport. Uh, for guys that have stepped it up to what was that one guy doing? He was like skiing off of rocks and parachuting and stuff like that. So yeah, Shane, out all these Shane sports McConkey. Sports. Yeah, it's how the uh, the evolution of them is is so interesting. And thank you for for that um, uh, for all that you know good positive energy. Definitely, I definitely need that. <laughs> Bro, when it's all you got to give, you know, you got to give it, right? Like, yep. even if there's nothing other than one's voice to affect change in a greater sphere, you still got your fucking voice. You still got a voice. Use yep. it, right? Use it. You Use it. And even if, even if it betrays you, use it to reach out to other voices. Use it yeah. to ask questions of voices you feel have done more and have more to say. Use it, you're right? I mean, there's all that that um wisdom out there to to, to use as motivation and i'm no better at actualizing on it than anybody else but um i see it right and and yeah like the hope of the next wave the 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 the, the chance of the next powder day uh, the opportunity to commune with the mountains if you like the, the 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 peace that i get from being in the sea that's 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 mainly what animates me like yeah. that's mainly what allows me to move forward because a life of, of working hours and paying bills is just for the birds. Everybody fucking knows that. Everybody feels the same way. And, and you know, God bless the, the hustlers and the people that are out there, you know, cash and checks or whatever. But, but like, I don't know, man. Like I, I, at this point in my life, feel more akin to 
the community of people that you mean to interview and and feel yourself a part of and right. I, I that that resonates with me more than than you know who closed the most recent you know client for their insurance firm it's, like i just don't give a shit a amen amen it, it's a, it's about self realization for me realizing where i'm at in life and being okay with that and my, some people say well you're not setting your goals high enough. That's mediocre talk. Well, that I'm I'm okay with that. Then I guess I'm I'm mediocre or whatever. But I I don't think about it that way. You know, definitely not. I think about it as 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 being this motivational person so that others can benefit from that. And through guiding and through the outdoor industry, um, you can do that so much more easier than I would say a teaching job at, in a classroom because yeah you do kind of get that feeling of a of a high I've seen these teachers on a roll man I had an anatomy teacher that would get on a roll man and he really loved it and you could tell he that was his high you know what I mean it was an adventure even though he did triathlons I guess <laughs> but uh yeah. but I think so much more uh, you get it out of adventure sports and out of the wilderness, wilderness, just being out there too, you know, just going out. You don't need to be doing extreme sports, I guess, either. <laughs> yeah, but there's, I mean, and, and I agree, I couldn't agree more. But then it begs the question, because I kind of have a contrarian mind where if I can wrangle it, I feel like I can, I'm onto something. But usually I'm just, you know, drowned in conflictions. But um, what was I going to say? So, uh what is the benefit of going out and doing something that risks our life and limb in the in the outdoors that is so honorable because i would agree i would i would argue that there is something existentially argue uh, existentially honorable about catching the biggest wave at pipe when it's triple overhead logically i don't know that i can argue to it but i know that seeing andy irons you know live his life and achieve what he did in surfing and 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 just just do the things he did has benefited my life. And that's so weird that it's, it's so far removed. The, 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 uh, the initial action by, by him or, or whomever is this inspiration, let's say. And then me, this person who draws power from, from that. It's, it's, it's divorced from time. It's by time and space by years and, and hundreds of, there are thousands of miles and yet it doesn't matter. Like if you go out there and you put it on the line, it's all that matters. It's, all it's that matters. when, when you're in that state and, and I'm climbing, and I'm climbing up that mountain, you know what I mean? And I'm rollerblading and I'm doing, I'm about to do that misty flip out of a, you know, a 12 foot wall, you know, and catch six feet of air, you know, over this obstacle. When you're you're in that moment right there, I think that feeling right there is what everyone wants, and and it's and your life is dull without it. You know what I mean? And and so that feeling right there is what we're all kind of sh wanting to strive for. I think I think life should be you you should have a happy life. Everyone wants to be happy. That's one thing for sure <laughs> that everyone wants is happiness. I think, and so. I think that's uh, what um, what I get out of it, and 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 the what the feeling means. You know, what is it all? What's this all mean? That feeling means life for me to feel that. You know, uh, to to be in the moment right there and then and there, and and you could fall at any moment. You know, and and will you? That's what I say in my documentary. I say, will you know? Adventure is like a line of sight stay on that line and be set free stray from that line a little and you may find consequence right i like that uh jocko willink is a is a as a another um individual that articulates to the importance of let's say staying on the path he he has a quote that i really like that that uh that i think is useful for me right now and that is discipline equals freedom it's like yeah yeah it fucking does you know yeah but, it's like, it's hard it's not, the, it's not the easy it's not the easy way you know yeah i like i like that and i i'm 
I, this is the way I'm thinking about that. It's like, we want to be free out there climbing these mountains and climbing these cliffs. Well, we got to discipline to do that. Okay. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You do. There's, there's, and, and, and for somebody who is just listening to this and it's like, Oh, you know, Isaac's going to go climb Shasta. I'm going to go climb Shasta. Like, let me do the talking for you just on this thing. Isaac, you've, and I don't, we don't know each other. We're just meeting each other through mutual friend. And I think you're an outstanding uh, dude. And, and I, I think we would get along really well and, and could, could, you know, have a, a wonderful friendship. But my point being just from what I know from less exposure to climbing than you have, probably you've done hundreds if not thousands of hours of training yourself physically of learning about ropes and rope systems and knots and metal you know tools that allow you to do what you're going to do you you've you've you know done the trial and error of years and years you've got to do it you've got to do it yourself right. in your room by yourself to remember that stuff that's what i realized my friends and i we started in college doing these these times. It was just me and a buddy. It wasn't a, a bunch of us. And I go over to his house and he'd be like, okay, let's set up uh, a three to one. Okay, let's take that down. Let's set it back up. Okay, let's set up, a, you know, an anchor system, you know, and, and that's, that's where you gain the experience right there. So um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I would say, uh, and I have a, a YouTube uh, a channel where I share all my climbs and stuff like that and my hikes. And I tell people, I give them just uh a little disclosure before I say, you know, this is, this is a serious hike. Come prepared before, uh, come prepared for this hike. Know before you go. Right. 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 And they, they have a saying in, 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 um, surfing, uh, when in doubt, don't go out, you know? <laughs> and, and just, I just think that that's a neat thing to find yourself at a position where now you have the knowledge to both respect the danger that you might not have known was there as a more novice practitioner, but you know, you also have the knowledge to go deeper into the mountains and, and make bigger goals. And, and the people that I know that are in my life that, you know, are into these kinds of things, let's say only continue to grow. Like it's, it's an expansive part of their life. It's not a part of their life that pulls from other parts. I mean, okay. It kind of does because it, it requires time and money. So that's, that's unfair to say, but it's like, I think about whitewater as a, as a, as an example, I'm not very into the whitewater community or, or I'm not a, a very avid rafter, let's say, but I've, I've even in my own life been on several different rivers. The people that I know that are in whitewater are just constantly uh, either, either putting in the time as guides and sharing their motivation or, you know, going to new and better or different rivers. Um, certainly that's the case with skiing. It's always like, you know, what's the next, bigger mountain to go to and, and I just think that that's a, a healthy thing to have in life it's it's certainly better than money being the only opportunity for growth at least yeah. to, to wish for you know um, there's always a bigger wave to surf there's always a bigger mountain to climb you know uh, and, and if not bigger if you if you get yourself up Everest then go climb a more difficult one or whatever there's always there's always that thing that will set you apart as you said earlier that's always available that's always out there and I think we all realize in in life that like when we're really doing it, when we're really like when we're really honoring ourselves, we're preparing for the next opportunity that we have to to dance with that. Like we know it's there. Like I know that the next time that I'm going to be challenged to to ride a wave well is it already exists. Like it's already a thing. It's already in space. It's just. I get to decide how I act between now and then. Like, like it's there in time. So now how well I like honor the ritual of getting the, to that time is, is how well I perform there. So that's something that I'm try trying to really deal with. And that is like the call to honor the call to adventure. Like the call to yeah. adventure is super important. And that's what, what um, Jordan Peterson and these other people that try to talk about the hero's journey talk about. It's like the call to adventure is super important, right? The, uh, the opportunity to go slay the dragon and, and get the gold or, you know, go, go face the trauma of our families, you know, in the cave. And, you know, there's all these archetypes, but we all understand it. Every, everybody that's in the human condition understands the the hero's journey as a motif and the call to adventure. But I'm, I'm trying to get even more meta, if you like, and say, yeah. Well, I got to honor the call to adventure. I need to like 
I need to like not only own it and say, yeah, hey, I'm a skier, or I'm a this, or I'm a that, and I'm a surfer, and 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 and, and hear hear me roar. But I also have to be able to do that and integrate that into like a responsible, constructive, productive member of society. Whether that means I'm teaching other people to do it, whether that you know somehow adding value, as you said earlier. Again, we're, we're attached to this idea of value, and for good reason, because it's because value is valuable, right? Like, if we need to understand value, to then imp- to then infuse that into all the things that we're that we're putting our time into. Um, and I tell you, I struggle, Isaac, with feeling like I've put enough value into the things that have given me such value. And yeah, and I need to I need to figure out how to do that in more and and better ways and i think that that the 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 wisdom that i see to tell myself is just consistency is the i I totally understand uh i i could use a a a friend for an example um she was leading what she thought a life was you know uh, and it's very uh cheap uh uh, boring you know what i mean she said her life was boring she was a mom you know what i mean she had kids and then she hadn't had a job and she didn't know what to do, you know? And so through the outdoors and through uh, meeting friends and going hiking and she started climbing and uh, through this stuff, she has got more value in her life and she is happier and she's not just, you know what I mean? Just some cog in a wheel, you know what I mean? She's more because of these experiences, you know, you go out there, and you get up this this climb that's 90 feet tall or whatever you know 50 feet tall 10 feet tall and you've accomplished something in life remember that remember that that's powerful right there remember what you've accomplished in life because then you can go back in your own life and you can say oh i've gone off and done that and it's not to be cocky but it's to use it as fuel so that you're more powerful in your life you know what i mean you're not afraid to step into the to the void right Right. And, and I think that, that, that something that's worth saying is that not only does that help us grow, give us fuel for the future, let us see what we're made of, and, and, and that's, a real, that's a real process, but it also does that somehow for everybody else. How the fuck does that work? I don't know, but it does. I know that it does because I feel all, that. Yeah, you know we're all connected. We're all yes, connected. Sir. Yes, sir. And when somebody levels up, when somebody steps out of the, you know, the predetermined and starts putting down new patterns, in some weird existential way, it affects everybody else. And and I've I've actually found um, a gentleman named Rupert Sheldrake. Um, like I've found him. Like uh, uh, that talks a lot about this in in reality, in let's say, in a, in a physical sciences sense, and calls it morpho, morphogenic fields or morphogenetic fields. And I'm telling you, it's, it's, a, it's a total you know, trip, uh, but it's very interesting. And it's this idea that, uh, I mean, I don't know, if you're at all interested in, in some trippy kind of, <laughs> uh, um, how would you say the cutting edge of theoretical physics in my, yeah, in my opinion, what, or, what we get of what we get out of going to nature, the Japanese right. have something on it and this might be similar and I'm, I'm butchering it. It's called Shin, Shin, Jin, Shinrin Yoku, Shin, Shinrin Yoku. And it's, okay. it's uh, how nature um, is a therapy. Basically sure. people can be healed by nature going out into it. And you can't heal everything, of course. If you walk into the nature with a broken leg, it's not going to do anything. But depression and all these other actual, those are actual sicknesses too, can be healed, you know? Right, right. Yeah, I feel you. It, it, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's um, you know, something that the Western world, in my opinion, needs more of, at least you know, I feel like the, the places that are suffering so greatly from, um, these the psychological illnesses and the extension the the the, the um, kind of synonymous uh, uh, you know symbiotic um, drug abuse um, issues um, are just because 
th this country is pushing so hard on this, um, you know, kind of death throes of a of a factory economy where you know a certain kind of conservative life and, and behavior set were, were to the greatest value of the community but we're just not there anymore we're in this entirely you know brave new world of interconnectedness you know whether or not you buy it on some spiritual woo -woo level you can't nobody can dispute this shit so we're all connected and there's yeah. a real responsibility there. And we still seem to be extraordinarily immature collectively with our ability to deal with this because we're using it to send, you know, cat pictures and, and you know, fail compilation. It, isn't it, that's, that's the one thing. It's like I, you, you post a beautiful picture of some great place that, that should offer you really joy and it gets, you know, nothing. And then, yeah, you post a cat picture and you freaking – you're viral, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, and and I think that that's that evolution is taking place. I think that maturation process is 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 actively taking place. I mean, how would you articulate your need? Because I contend that the artistic impulse is a need to 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 make a movie to to do this conversation with me, isn't it? On some level, this 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 compulsion to create real media as a as an antithesis to fake media almost as an inoculation to the virus of look at this beautiful place now buy the car that we're that we're showing you driving to that yeah place, you know yeah. look at us you know doing this thing now buy this or that and and you know, I guess there's a place for that. You know, like advertising seems to make the motherfucking world go around. It just the one, the one mind. where the guy's driving the the Range Rover up those stairs, and that place I've been to over there, um, and climbed there, and it's a popular uh, Range Rover commercial where he drives all the way up to the top of this huge, one of the biggest uh, natural arches in the world, uh, it's limestone. And yeah. yeah, it's all for a Range Rover advertisement. Yeah. And I bet they totally messed that place up. Or maybe they didn't. But, but yeah. I couldn't believe it because I've climbed there and I've been there. And it's just like, geez, man. <laughs> all for yeah. advertising. The commodification of stuff is a hard thing to take. And, you know, they've been doing it forever, right? It's, it, the story is nothing new. But, um, yeah, how to, like, be a part of it in a way that doesn't just, just you know, Kills. Through uh, yeah, through through things like this conversation, like you're like you're just saying through my documentary, that's that's definitely how how we can make it. You know, something at least something that we want <laughs> instead of because that, that's that's I, I hate to sound a negative like that, but it's kind of how society pushes you because you see all these these special interest groups, you know, doing what they want because they have the money and boom, that's what they're doing. So let's do that. Let's push right. it another way. <laughs> right. That's a really well said because we know, let's say in, in, for example, the, the whitewater and mountain bike and ski and climbing communities that if we had all the money, shit would only be better for everybody else. There would be more trails to enjoy with your kids. There would be, you know, opportunities to go and climb on rocks everywhere with boulder pads just integrated. And, you know, the trails would be wonderful. And, you know, the, the, the surfing beaches would be, you know, immaculate. And, and you know, and, and, and who does, you know, where is the money accumulating in our current paradigm? In the hands of people that are drilling into the ground and extracting. Yeah you know flammable they, liquid yeah. just like they want to do more they, yeah they, they they you know they want to do crazy stuff you know and yeah what yeah, the fuck bring bring pipe bring pipes across you know lands that you shouldn't be doing that and you know it's like haven't i thought the greenpeace actually did something i thought that they that, you know I, and don't get me wrong um, my values my values are definitely different of those people of greenpeace but i thought they definitely approved a point that we need to conserve our environment but no it doesn't look like that at all <laughs> they, they didn't listen to any of them <laughs> right right I, I yeah that's been one of the biggest stumbling blocks in my life is is just genuinely feeling maybe maybe in folly maybe not you know in truth but feeling like i i just can't 
communicate the value of the natural world effectively enough to those that would seek to destroy it, let's say. And, and to be fair, I haven't had a lot of opportunities to have conversations with, you know, policymakers or whatever, but it's just like, it's, it's, so, it's so apparently true that for me to even think or even acknowledge, let's say that there are people that are drill baby drill and, and, and they just genuinely don't give a fuck about, you know, the, the mountains of this world or the oceans of this planet. Or the rivers and the dams. The rivers, or, yeah. you know, are the great, I mean, just, just the, 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 the recognition that the unspoilt nature of, of the things that seemingly don't provide us with tangible resource are actually more valuable in the abstract. Much, much, much more valuable yeah. than the some of their parts. That's where a religious or a spiritual sensibility comes about in me because I'm a fairly, you know, as much as the next person, you know, Western rationalist was, was raised in a reductionist kind of just scientific mindset. But I'm crazy enough to try to be like, okay, I'm in beginner chemistry. Before I waste six months on thinking about beginner chemistry, I want to go learn about the most most fringe you know, f farthest advanced you know chemical you know sciences around just so i know what the fuck the deal is then i'll start you know apprenticing and in, in my whole life the same thing has been true the people at the forefront don't fucking know anything about what they're talking yeah. about they yeah. they're building a set of agreements based on premises and and have and have built the, the wonders of modern yeah, or it's like technology some some council, you know, a bunch of people that just want jobs and just want to get paid a bunch of money and aren't really doing anything. Like one of the th one of the questions that they that um, you have uh, as a uh, undergraduate there at SOU um, is what is what in your opinion is allowed? What should be opinion? What should be allowed in our outdoors in our national parks? And I think it's kind of a, a, a uh, maybe a loaded question because people start uh, loading either side. I mean, maybe that's not the right. Thing. Anyways, they start arguing about what should be there and what should be not. Oh, bikes should be allowed. Oh, mountain bikes shouldn't be allowed. But you got to realize, guys, if these guys aren't allowed there, those are the ones that want to conserve this land that that we that bring it to the lawmakers. You know what I mean? And without all of them being there, so now I'm thinking I would answer that question way differently. I wouldn't argue like I was kind of and have an art more of an, I'd have more of a discussion where I'd be like, you know what? All of them need to be there in the right amounts. That way they can all cons help conserve the land. Right. They can all have a voice. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah. The problem comes about, doesn't it? When we decide who's the problem. Oh, they're the problem. Oh no, no. Those other group are the problem. Oh, those, yeah. those people are the problem it's just never that that way it's just that that misunderstanding is the problem this set of of premises that we're accepting as an assumption and when we don't you know understand fully is the problem those those you know miscommunications are the problem but you know i think we need to build more inroads don't we and it seems to be a way to do so to join the communities that we be as valuable and see our our, our place in you know You've, we've named them, and then to somehow empower those communities to do value what, for more people. And know? what better and what and be, what better way to advertise your community the right way? I think with uh, with the outdoor industry, you go right. into Ashland, and right. you can totally see it around town. They've got you know it's a climbing, a kayaking community. And I'm not saying they're selling out. You know what I mean? They're not because you see the way they do it. It's kind of like you go in there. And just by the way, it's kind of, uh, they have some statues and stuff like that, I mean, and art figures and stuff like that. You know it's a climbing and kayaking and paddling community. It's cool. <laughs> Mountain biking and skiing, too. I love yeah, Ashland. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, went up to, uh, we went up to the ski park in the, in the summer or spring or fall, I don't remember, but there was, when there was no snow, and uh, biked from Mount Ashland right? to, to Lithia Park. I've done that like yeah, through four corners. Yeah. What fun. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Right. I agree. Um, yeah. And, and isn't that kind of a, a native, um, um, what am I trying to say? Uh, sentiment to honor the natural world, to, 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 to regard as holy and sacred the natural, you know, 
occurrences, the water, the mountain. You know, I agree. Yeah. And, and why in the fuck have we turned away from that in the modern world? I don't know. I, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Um, because one of the things that I realized that, sorry, that made me realize and made me ask that question, why have we turned away from this stuff was when I went to China and I come around at night and I come around the farmland, uh, to where I'm going to my uh, apartment and I come out on this farmland and it's this beautiful scene of all these fireflies, I believe, or some sort of their version of a June bug or whatever lit up and they were all diving over this tall grass and you could see the grass green illuminated through their fluorescent like transparent bodies. And it's like the craziest LED light show that you've seen at a festival or a rave or anything, but natural. And I could not believe it. And I took my hat off and I'm just like, how can we do what we're doing to this earth? Mm -hmm. And anyone who says different and says you're a fucking hippie liberal, go fucking hug a tree. No, dude, fuck you, bro. How could you do that, dude? Look how beautiful this stuff is, you know? <laughs> it just, yeah. it really yeah. baffles me. And it's, it's, but you know, it's also hard, damn it, it's hard to be an activist and just take off with this stuff and do that really. Because I, I have more of, I guess, a rational mind, maybe, or, or, or not. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, pragmatism, um, you know, you, you, yeah. I, and, and I think the way, the way, you know, to go, go, the way of the internet, the way of constructive behavior as opposed to destructive, the way of communication as opposed to fighting or, or name, name calling or, or, you know, identity politics was a big buzzword just a little while ago because I think on a, on a collective level we're all, regardless of, of political side, recognizing that tribalism is not constructive. It just, it just shuts down the conversation. And there's a lot of conversations that need to be had, you know? Um, so, yeah, I think that this is a start. I think however humble just just identifying ourselves as being people that appreciate you know what the earth has to offer and and then just starting there like you know i i struggle with it because part of my psyche is like yeah but look at elon musk and and look at technology and and you know technology you know i should just be a technologist and and the and the, and the you know advances that we're making are so fascinating and i and i i am fascinated by technology and i think it's very interesting to to try to conceptualize what we're doing is this hive minded, you know, band of primates trying to build some kind of computer, you know, mechanistic animal that, you know, succeeds us. But like, aside from that, like what makes the human experience profound and, and, and divine and worth living is all of what we've already been touching on, at least from my experience. And so, you yeah. know, whether or not, you know, fucking skynet turns on in the next you know 30 40 <laughs> right. in my lifetime i just i feel like about this yeah. Stuff, <laughs> yeah we might as well we might as well have enough you know commando you know outdoor oh, right. people that are ready to you know be john connors because right i you know I just, that's why i love the outdoors like i've got uh, i don't because i just got back kind of from a trip and i was using the same bag but i usually have a bag ready to go like <laughs> jump bag, survival bag. I'm not a prepper. It's just something that I've always done. Like <laughs> moving around from China to Oregon, uh, to back and forth. I've always lived out of a bag basically. Um, so it's just easy to keep my stuff that way. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Well, yeah, man, more power to you. God bless you. Thank you for having sure. the conversation with me. Sure. Thank I'd you. love to do it again. You know? I would. I, I would say I would love to do it uh, maybe after my Shasta climb because that, Devin, is uh, going to be a big goal for me. And I believe it's a goal for a lot of people and right. they want to maybe experience and, and know how that went. So I'd love to do it after maybe my Shasta climb. Let's do it. Let's do it. And I, yeah, I, I do not know the answer about whether or not the uh, Zoom free membership has a maximum recording. It doesn't time. look like it. We've been on for I, day. <laughs> I think it's still going. Yeah. So I'm yeah. Gonna, um, we'll wrap up here pretty quick. I'll see this file um, for length. I'll send it to you and we'll, and we'll go from there. I'll post it. And very, very interested to talk to you again. You know, best of luck on your, on your climb. Be safe. And, thank you. And yeah, thank you very much for the time, man. I appreciate yeah. it. It's fun to, to, um, 
you know, it's fun to talk with you. Cheers, man. I'll talk to you later, man. <laughs> okay, thank you, sir. How long did we go? I don't know. Uh, like we started at 6, and it is 7.30. Okay, so yeah. let's see. I think that was an hour and a half. Okay, so we pause recording.